The fanatic, but we keep it 100, keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk, you know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina, upstate, yeah. yeah. 864. Yeah, the F A N A T T I C C. The fanatic, where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call it. I'm with that game right there. I don't know if I share the same sentiments as you with the with the dogs and the Buckeyes. But I seem to be in the minority, so let's go ahead and jump into it, man. Let's talk about the Peach Bowl going down in the A-Town between Georgia and Ohio State. Georgia's uh, second indoor facility down there uh, <laughs> off of Mercedes driveway. So uh, what's your initial thoughts on this game, uh, Stat Guy? Man, you know, Ohio State needed a little help, and boy, did they get it to backdoor their way into the playoffs after – the performance they had in their big rivalry game against Michigan. But look, man, end of the year, this is where you want to be. You want to be one of the final 14 standing, um, and here they are. And so they they have to come down south. They got to go to Georgia to play the dogs in their backyard. Um, and really, I mean, honestly, let's look at it. The Mercedes-Benz Dome has turned into the house that Georgia built, right? It's almost like they built that just for y'all. Um, to get a couple extra home games every year, whether it be playoffs or the Chick-fil-A kickoff. So, um, I mean, it's going to be a good game. Ohio State is still a good team, but they have not – there have been some times this year against subpar competition that they have not looked at peak. And Georgia has done Georgia things to the primetime competition all year long. When the money's been down, y'all crushed the teams that they thought were going to be the teams that give you kind of the run for your money. Yeah, I think Georgia's been up and down based on their t – not up and down as in losing. Uh, neither has Ohio State other than the Michigan game. But, um, like, the, the the Missouri game and the Kent State game, of course, uh, stand out. Uh, I think the Kentucky score is a little bit misleading because it was 16 nothing at halftime. Um, and Georgia pretty much tried to take the air out of the ball and get out of there with no um, – with no injuries ohio state the only two games that i would say that uh i mean of course i was i was listening i was all the way surprised by the michigan outcome uh i did not expect michigan to you know dominate the second half like they did ohio state jumped out you know like 14 to 3. i thought when it was 14 3 i was like oh yeah ohio state getting some revenge it's over you know what i'm saying they're gonna run away with it especially since break quorum only play like two plays in the first quarter and then that was it. Um, but then Michigan handled business and, and got physical with them. But the two games that surprised me, like that they couldn't score on Notre Dame. And I know people see people like to say, well, it's the first game, you know what I'm saying? So I look at it a little bit different. I look at it like this. Uh, you had since February, January, whenever you do winter drills, you know what I'm saying? And then you go through spring you're watching film for not, for eight months plus. So that first game, I think you should be ready. I think coaches should be ready. Uh, players should be ready. I think Notre Dame came ready. I don't think the uh, – I think Ohio State offense uh, was in, you know, I guess it put in shock when Jackson Smith and Jigba got, got hurt, you know, early in the game. And then it was like they couldn't really throw the ball. Notre Dame was ready for that. And then the Northwestern game. Northwestern game – I get it. It was raining. The winds was like a billion miles per hour. Uh, but what that showed me is you go, you put that game with the 2021 Michigan game. It shows me that uh, Ohio State's not good in inclement weather. Good thing for Ohio State, we're playing in the dome. We don't got to worry about the weather. That's why I think a lot of people are kind of sleeping on this matchup. Ohio State's going to put up – I think Ohio State's going to put up some numbers. Uh, I think Georgia's going to put up some numbers. I don't <laughs> – I don't want it to be a shootout, but I think either team can actually win in a shootout. What are you thinking, like, the Florida game is going to be? So, I mean, you're looking at two offenses, Georgia averaging just shy of 40 a game. Ohio State, even with only scoring, what, 23 against Michigan, is still averaging 44 a game. You're talking about two prolific scoring offenses. Um, I definitely see – kind of a shootout style. And the reason that worries me for Ohio State is because of how good y'all's defense is. And so Ohio State's only given up 19 points a game. Georgia's only given up 12. But I just, if it's if it's that type of game, if it's 
if it's in that like 19 to 17 type range, um, I think that's what it's going to take for Ohio State to win. But I don't know how comfortable they feel playing in a close game with the money on the line against a big team. So I think Ohio State would feel better if it gets into that shootout style. Um, we talked about teams' comfort zones. And I think a team that likes to score 40 points a game would feel more comfortable if the game's closer in the 35s to 40s versus if the game's closer in the low 20s or the teens. And I just don't know if the shootout advantage goes to Ohio State because I, if you're telling me one defense is going to make a stop to win the game, my money's going to be on Georgia's defense to make that stop before Ohio State. Uh, that's an interesting take. I could uh, definitely see that. Um, okay, I can see that. Uh, I think um, it's going to be interesting to see Georgia's DBs against uh, the best wide receiver core they faced all year. I know we played Tennessee, but to me, Cedric Tillman uh, is, you know, he's a, a big body receiver. He's really good, all conference caliber. Uh, it was only his first game back, I think. Uh, he, they targeted him a lot, though. Jalen Hyde, they did kind of uh, hold Jalen Hyde uh, under control. Brew McCoy, I think he's a great athlete. I don't think he's necessarily a great receiver. I think with Ohio State, Ohio State brings three really good and two elite receivers. I think uh, Abuka, I think Ameka Abuka, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, him and... Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. are the two elite ones. I think Julian Film is really good. And then, uh, you know, they split their tight end out a lot. Number eight. I don't know what his name is. And it's going to be interesting to see if Travion Henderson is going to be healthy. Uh, the last couple of games, um, their other running back had to carry the load, Mayan Williams. And uh, they got like a true freshman guy. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I think the thing is, I think you'll see something from Georgia, uh, on defense, similar to Tennessee, where they try to pressure, uh, definitely up the middle. And, uh, one thing about CJ Stroud, he can run, but he is very, very reluctant to run. I think out of all the quarterbacks in the playoffs, he's the most reluctant to run only when absolutely necessary. So, but I would say, I think he's probably definitely the most accurate of all the quarterbacks well so something that we haven't brought up yet that i definitely wanted to get your opinion on is this ohio state defense though they got gashed on the ground against michigan is only giving up 119 yards a game in the russian attack but they are facing a stable and when i say stable i mean stable of running backs down at running back you down there at the uga I mean, y'all are averaging 207 a game, and that's without having a cat that's going for like 120, 130. It's the whoever offense when y'all run the ball. Y'all don't care who gets it. They just going to tote that thing. What's your yeah. thoughts? Uh, I think we will be able to run. Uh, I think um, I think initially they will, like everybody, I think for some reason people still hasn't, haven't grasped the concept that we're not the same Georgia, you know, that we were in 2017. It's, and it's like almost hard for them to – grasp that concept we're not the run run pass run run pass team we are very effective running the ball but like you said like Stetson Bennett has completed passes to 21 different people this year which is why I know some of the Ohio State fans I saw one guy on Twitter looked at it, it was like our our leading receiver had is Brock Bowers uh he has like seven a little bit over 700 yards receiving it's because so many people actually catch the ball um, I don't think it's hard for our running backs to go for a thousand every season because so many of them get the ball. I think that's going to be the challenge for Ohio State's defense is who are you trying to stop? Are you trying to line up and stop Brock Bowers and then and and um, Darnell Washington and then let Lad McConkey and A.D. Mitchell looks to be healthy, uh, which a lot of people don't realize. Ohio State and Georgia both did something that a lot of people didn't have to do. They came into the season with all conference receivers, uh, Jackson Smith and Jake would be an All-American, but both actually got hurt in the first game. Now, A.D. Mitchell actually played the whole game. A.D. Mitchell got hurt in the first series of the Sanford game, which was the second one, but the rest of the season, neither one of those guys pretty much played. Uh, A.D. Mitchell lined up in the SEC Championship a couple of times. I think we tried to throw it to him one time in the end zone. But I think that's the challenge for Ohio State is trying to match up with all the weapons uh, that we have. I think Georgia's challenge on the other side isn't necessarily, I know people look at it and say, oh, you got to stop Marvin Harrison. Like, Marvin Harris is one of these players, you don't stop him. You try to slow him down. You know what I mean? It's just like basketball. You don't stop, you know, the top scorer if, if they're always getting the buckets. You try to make sure everybody else is held in check. 
if Marvin Harrison goes for 150 and two touchdowns, I mean, if nobody else is doing anything, that's fine with me. I mean, you know, last year when we played Clemson in the opener, uh, it was kind of the same. And Goddard went for over 100 yards, but nobody else did anything. So I think that's that's going to attack it. And I think our running backs will be able to uh, get some yardage. And you know how Kirby likes to lean on them in the second half. So if, we were, if we're able to get a double-digit, like 14 to 17-point lead, then, yes, you will see a heavy dose of those guys. And I think uh, it's going to come down to how many people Ohio State rotate in that front seven. Yeah, and I'll be honest, man, for those, for those at home that don't believe that Georgia is running back you, man, you're talking about – four running backs, you got one averaging over seven yards a pop, two averaging over five yards a pop, and then the fourth is only averaging, oh, well, only 4.9 yards a pop. And it's not like these are on, like, five or six carries. These are still only years' worth of carries, man, that these dudes just know how to get yards. And it's an everybody backfield. And, you know, I think that's kind of the, the shame for Georgia's not having that 1,000-yard runner. And we were talking about it, like, Brock Bowers might bust off a 60-yard – touchdown completion or you know you've got a running back break 230s but then doesn't get the touchdown to solidify his stats because he gets pulled down the red zone and so um it is a shame that you don't have that one bell cow but man that backfield those dudes could go anywhere else in the country and be all americans it seems like yeah i think kenny mcintosh is gonna be uh counted on in the run game and the pass game you know he's actually like over 700 yards rushing, but also over 400 yards receiving as well. So I think that'll be the matchup that uh, Ohio State may try to um, focus on as well. Um, now, what does Ohio State, like, give me something that they need to do to win the game? Um, they they have to sustain drives. So not necessarily score, because like I said, I, I think if this gets into a shootout, it favors Georgia immensely because Georgia's more likely to get the stop before Ohio State. Ohio State just needs to sustain drives. They can't go three and out, let this defense get some fire to them, um, let them start pinning their ears. Even if it's for a field goal or even a long drive and then a punt, they just need to put some drives together and take some clock off of the game clock and kind of work with Georgia on that to shorten the game a little bit. Um, Because like I said, I feel if Ohio State's going to win this game, if it gets over 25, they're in trouble. Um, Mm. I just don't see them being able to stop Georgia's offense. So they need to sustain drives, get the points when they can, um, and keep their defense rested. Because when you're going three and out and you got a team on the other side that I feel like is probably better in the trenches than you on that side, and they're pulling it and running it down your throat, that then turns into what we saw in that Michigan second half Ohio State couldn't put drives together, and Michigan just kept on, kept on with the train moving down the tracks. Yeah, I think uh, Georgia needs to get pressure up the middle, um, get right in C.J. Stroud's face. Uh, we cannot let him sit back there. He, like I said, he's not like all these other quarterbacks. Man, C.J. Stroud is super accurate, and if you just let him sit back there, he'd go back there. And listen, man, as, as good as the secondary and the defense is, he'll pick you apart. So I think that's the key for Georgia is getting pressure especially up the middle. I'd rather, you know, he get up the middle and then our edges, you know, basically hold your rush lanes and then the edges contain, but get that rush, rushing right up the middle with uh, Jalen Carter and uh, some of those other big boys. Uh, you know, Will Muschamp, he'll dial up some pressure if he needs to, but if we can get pressure with that front four, then I think we'll be in a, in a good uh, space. So before we Move on to the next one. Uh, give me your score prediction for Georgia, Ohio State in the Peach Bowl. Got you. So first, I'll let you know it is a six and a half point spread. Georgia is a six and a half point favorite, um, and the over under is sixty two and a half. Um, yeah. so, so I'm going to take the over, um, and I'm going to take Georgia to cover the spread. I think this turns into a shootout early. Georgia gets the stop they need. And then it gets ugly. I'm taking the dogs to win 42 to 21. Okay. And what would you what'd you say the over under was again? 62 and a half. 62 and a half. Give me the over. I'm taking the dogs 42 to 28. I think uh, the dogs get up seven, you know, at some point between the second and third quarter. And I think they hold that lead and add on at the end. Uh, and then, of course, you know how that goes when people press at the end. 
I think it'll be a good game. I think this is going to be one of the more entertaining games of the bowl season just because I feel like these are the two most talented teams in the nation. Uh, I know Michigan beat Ohio State just because you're the most talented. Don't mean you always win, but that's what I, that's what I see. I see Georgia 42, uh, Ohio State 28. There you have it. Georgia, Ohio State fans, man, get in the comments. Let us know. Uh, what you think the score is going to be and uh, what you think the keys to the game is. So on to the next bowl game. We got it jumping like it's that valley. I call my dogs out the pound. Let's go eat. Turn on the fan at it. Let's have a debate. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry going to eat everything up off their plate?